Hello my charms, thank you so much for coming back to Lily Katule channel. If you're new here, welcome home. Here I share content on beauty, motivation and motherhood. And if this is your kind of content, kindly hit that subscribe button and follow that notification bell so that every time I upload new video, you get notified. Today's video is totally exciting. So I told you on Instagram and Facebook for you to send me questions or comments that you would like to know about me instead of me just coming up with random questions. And I got almost 20 questions. So I will try and answer them in this video and I hope you enjoy. I'm not Kikuyu, I am Kamba, I am also not Embu, I am not from Taita Taveta, I am Kamba. My full name is Lily Katule Mutuku, so that's who I am. So I would say, as a wife, what keeps me going is my partner. I really have a wonderful partner. He's a present father, he's a present spouse. So what keeps me going is the fact that he shows me every day, every single day that he wakes up, that he will always choose us. And that also makes me work on my side and uh, just, yeah, just show him that I got you. So that's what keeps me going as a wife, that I got a really, really wonderful partner and I thank God for that. Uh, as a mother, wow. What keeps me going as a mother is my child, of course. She, I know you, you've had this statement so many times, but yes, she is the most intelligent toddler I have ever come across. And that keeps me going, the fact that I want to be there for her. I want to give her the best in life. I want to be able to be that factor that will help her meet all her dreams, all her uh, talents. I just want to be someone who, when she sits and thinks of someone to talk to, someone to cry to, someone to run to, no matter good news or bad news, it's going to be the mom. That's me. So that motivates me that I want to have the most, I don't know if it's something like the nicest, but I just want to have a very healthy, functional human being out there. And that's what keeps me going as a mother. Uh, in business, oh wow, I love what I do. I started it nine years ago. I'm a makeup artist and a makeup trainer. So me, I started doing it for fun. And I think that gave me a really good a platform for me to be able to really just get to know I love what I do, I enjoy what I do, and that keeps me going, that there's nothing else I'm good at. Honestly, if I was to do anything else, I wouldn't, because all I know is makeup, all I know, all I, all I know I'm good at, something that I do so effortlessly, something that I would wake up at three and sleep at 12 doing it, so that keeps me going, that I have no other option than what I do. I have come to understand that every time you feel as if you're not functional, you are in that moment of just a lot of negative vibe, allow yourself to feel that. The only difference is how long should you allow that to happen. So allow it, but also don't take too long. So I allow myself to feel what I'm feeling. The other thing is I talk to people closest to me, my mom, my partner, uh, some of my friends, uh, also people in business, so of course I talk to them because most of the time you'll find whatever is bringing you down has to do with whatever is surrounding you. Is it your relationship? Is it your responsibilities maybe as a mother, as a spouse? Is it uh, your business? So I will identify exactly what is making me feel the way I'm feeling and then I will talk to the relevant people. And then of course, if it's 
if it's if it's business I will have to rise up because as I've said I love what I do and I know where I want to go if it is my relationship I will look at the good times I will look into that I will see what what good do I have around me and then we'll talk things through and of course we'll come back to normal if it is um, just life I will find a way to do it but first I allow myself to feel it and of course I also cry that is how I get better if I don't cry I will still have it so I have to cry and then now think about things so Nima is my three-year-old girl I wouldn't say I really knew when was the right time to have her but something that was a major factor was the dad it felt right when I met him uh, our, our, our relationship went it was pretty fast story for another day but everything just felt right I'm not saying that that's how you should tell you're right but according to me that is how I felt I felt like this is it I'm, I'm no longer going to search uh, of course I was in a previous relationship and the guy asked me at some point to be pregnant and I, I did feel like I was ready so I feel like that time that moment in time when I met my husband then definitely it just felt right is that kind of person who really will just tell you straight to the point this and this and this is what I want and for me that's what I value so I felt like we could vibe um, so the tattoo question I have always never bothered to answer but since I asked you to ask me I will answer what does your boob tattoo mean? All my tattoos have no meaning except one. And uh, I had it, I think, last year. Yes, I, I had it last year. And um, I was in that point of time where I realized that um, I've actually gone through a lot and I am very resilient, I'm very strong. So I needed something that would uh, have meaning for the first time i thought that a tattoo that i'm going to have should have meaning so yeah i only have one tattoo that has a meaning and it means resilience it's a dandelion plant i don't know whether you know a dandelion plant so uh it's on my arm so this is the dandelion plant it's that kind of thing that you normally shika as kids and then we we blow and then we make a wish it's white so it grows practically anywhere cold I don't know, humid, hot, desert, anywhere. So it's, it's th it thrives anywhere. And uh, I call myself a dandelion child that I thrive through any kind of challenge. So that's the only tattoo that uh, has meaning. Do your tattoo, oh yeah, I've answered the other one. Do your tattoo have meaning? No, none have, mean have a meaning, including the book tattoo. Um, how many tattoos do you have? I think so far either 9 or 10 either between 9 and 11 there I haven't really counted them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so I think 9 I think 9 uh, do you plan to add any more tattoos? hmm this is a question that I really have to think about because uh, th there is a lot of disputes when it comes to a Christian who is actually born again, of which I am born again, having tattoos. So there are pastors who support it and I'm trying to really get to know why and there are pastors who are against it. Most of these pastors who are against this have seen at the black black people black people let me just use that and then the ones who are for it are the white people so i need to get to know why i felt like i needed to add because i don't have a tattoo of my daughter and i feel like i need to have it and also every moment in time i get to experience things that i feel like they need to be documented also tattoos for me is an art, is an expression. I'm so artistic. I can sing, I can dance, I can do poetry, I am a makeup artist. So art revolves around me and I feel it's a way of expressing myself. So yeah, I think I will have to answer that probably in a few months if I'll have added or not on what I would have found about tattoos. All right. So 
of course looking at my husband and my previous relationships i would say mentally what turns me on is confidence i love a man who is confident you can tell me anything anywhere anyhow you're not afraid of what i'll think because anyway you want to communicate that so that confidence makes me know you know what anajielewa so if you say no if you say yes that's up to you him he communicated what he wanted i also like smart people so because i feel like the conversation and i'm not trying to say smart at yo unapatanga a no how you think how you talk how you express yourself that is actually a very good turn on so that is what mentally yeah intelligence and confidence turn me on um for sexually i looking at my husband what turns me on sexually is you getting to understand me and where i'm coming from like get to understand my mood am i in the mood to be cuddled am i in the mood to listen to, to like for you to talk to me for you to take me out on a romantic date for you to put some movies so i just look at my is it called body what <laughs> what do you call it body something just look at my body cues and they will communicate to you and also get to understand me get to know what do i like where do i want to be touched when and where and uh, yeah what parts are more sensitive than the other i feel like you're just getting to understand that and your effort is more of pleasing me than just pleasing yourself definitely it's a turn on so yeah I hope I've answered I've really tried to answer it as simple as possible but also for you to understand I've been doing those free tests on Google for the longest time and I don't feel I know I am completely sure I know my personality type even though people say I am a choleric and um I know what I can tell you is I know I'm very straightforward. I don't beat around the bush. I know I'm very bossy. I know um I uh, I come out as very confident and bold. Um I feel like I am different people in different scenarios. If I am in a circle that I'm very familiar, I'll be the extrovert of the extroverts. If I am in a new place, I will be so quiet, you won't even imagine it's me, so I will be an introvert unless you approach and talk to me. So, yeah, I also like things done a certain way. I love order, I love neatness, I am a clean freak. So I don't know where that goes to. I also I'm not very flexible. You come and tell me you're going to KFC, then you change all of a sudden to Java. It will take some time for me to like be okay. Let's go. My head is like nena kula kuku ya KFC. It tastes a certain way. Then you're already telling me to start going to Java, even though there is chicken. But my mind needs to process that. So I don't know where that personality type belongs. <laughs> first thing i really want to address he is not my baby daddy he's my husband so put some respect <laughs> on his name he is not my baby daddy he is my husband he is a very present partner and uh, yeah i would just want him to be addressed as my partner or my husband but not baby daddy i no longer see him on your photos yes because i feel like i am not in that space where i need to post him to prove to the world that we are still together you know i just not even long ago let's say even 2 years ago i felt like my partner needs to post me every now and then for me to feel like he loves me i also need to post him for me to prove to him that you know what you mean important to me but as we are growing and getting to stay with each other longer and longer getting to understand even just his kind of personality he's a very reserved kind of person and uh, he is very mature actually even for his age so i feel i felt like i need to also understand what does he like not just what i like i'm coming to understand that we need to love our partners the way they want to be loved not the way we want to be loved so he is not the kind of person to be posted all the time yes he appreciates being posted but that is not him expressing himself out there and also it has taken me time to get to know that me posting food when we are in a restaurant me posting his photos so i'm trying to snap photos when we are somewhere takes our moment away 
he might say something that I will not even hear simply because I was concentrating on taking that perfect photo for me to post later. So I'm in that space where I'm just enjoying what we do and uh, when we're just together. So nothing to do with posting. It doesn't mean I don't post. I'm, 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 I'm those kind of people who need to post, but it's being regulated nowadays because I'm trying to enjoy the moment, listen to him more than concentrate on posting. So we are still together. Six years going strong. Love and appreciate. Oh, this one is a feedback. Oh, so love and appreciate your content. Please keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. This is going to be like our 10th video. So if you love the content, kindly keep subscribing and tell me also, just share what you'd want to hear, what you'd want to know. Yeah, just help me help you, make you have fun and enjoy this content. Thank you so much whoever sent this. Um, okay, I think this is also a compliment. Your boobs are sexy. AF, I won't cast the tattoo so the tattoo is what makes my boob sexy thank you so much i appreciate um another compliment she is a kind loving and down-to-earth lady i have ever met oh she did my makeup i'm a makeup artist and a makeup trainer i will train you how to do your makeup very well she did my makeup and we had a wonderful conversation she has great plan ahead Oh, thank you so much. I do have a great plan for my brand. My brand is called Lika House. So kindly just pop in. I'm based in Hallingham. Yeah, I will give you very good rates. I'm not expensive simply because I'm in Hallingham. Take that mentality out, by the way. Uh, oh, God. Another compliment. There are so many. You are a lovely person you are a choleric aha uh -huh. you see someone is telling me already my personality type they think i'm a choleric you are motherly you are beautiful and you are a good addition to our team thank you so much i appreciate it no i am not but i am the only girl only daughter i have two brothers i'm in the middle i'm a middle child so my elder brother is 32, turning 32 this year. The younger brother turns 19, so I am in the middle. I'm not the only child, but I am. I think I'm the only out in social media kind of child. The rest are very mellow. I used to, I used to have very long hair, so that was that used to be my favorite body feature. Now that my hair is not there, I think I love my eyes. That is for me. Coming from people, people say my eyes and my smile and my legs. So I don't know. For me, what stands out is my eyes because I communicate with my eyes when I'm happy. I smile, my eyes become smaller. When I'm excited, my eyes are, they, they brighten up, they twinkle, they shine. When I'm angry, they become red. So I love my eyes. They can be able to communicate to you. My worst period was 2019. Uh, my child was just one year. Uh, I got fired. When I got fired, I had tried pushing my makeup brand. Nothing was successful. Nothing was like becoming successful. So I decided to look for employment and I got fired. And that just broke me because I felt like I'm really pushing to be able to provide for my child and to support my partner, but nothing is working. But that moment also has its best time that came. But that is my worst moment. 2019 was really my worst moment. The best moment in life is when I became a mom. It, it has taught me so many things and I have done a video about what motherhood has taught me. So being a mother to my child is one of my best moments. Well, I'm a very positive person and I find myself being positive in where, even when I have no reason to be positive and I like that about myself because it's very hard for me to give up so that also means I'm resilient that is something I like about myself and I'm also an encourager I find myself being a motivating factor around me if someone is feeling low I would say something to them that will make them just feel like you know what I feel I can do this one more time anything anyone around me and I know they're they're just going through something yeah uh, I, I like to encourage a lot and I'm also kind I 
used to sneak out to go clubbing. I've also done a video about my first time in the club. So yeah, you can go and check that out. My best accomplishment is starting a business just a month before COVID hit and being able to, sus to sustain that business until now. It's not been an easy journey, excuse me. And um, one day I'll talk about it when I am, when I get to the place I want to get or when I am near the success point that I feel like, okay, so here I am successful. I will tell you about the things that I've gone through in just opening my business and running a successful business. My biggest fear is not accomplishing the dreams that I see for myself having in the future. And that means even being able to support my children accomplish their dreams. I want to be able to have make an impact in their lives for them to see that you know what my mom did this i can also do this my mom oh i want to start a new business my mom can help me do it because she has acquired so much wealth and knowledge and wisdom that i can make it possible for them so it's just not being able to accomplish what i know i am capable of accomplishing yeah i try not to live in regret but if i can pick one thing that still bothers me is how I lived my campus life and I don't mean the fun that I had that fun I had was good because it has made me at least not have those what do you call them midlife crisis where you're doing things you should have done kitambo now but I feel like I underestimated myself so much I didn't know the power I had then because I, I, I would have done a lot I had the time I had the resources uh, I had I could try try an error and still know what what I can change but still no regrets starting a business starting a business I have always thought that I'm those kind of people because of also my parents you soma na soma baka PhD so you cry you hey you crime Allah the kikuyu in me Ah, <laughs> the kikuyu in me you crime okay so I have always thought that I need to work so hard for me to be able to climb the corporate ladder for me to be able to reach my potential I never thought not even once that I can run a business purely full-time so when I started my business last year February 2020 that took a lot of me it took a lot it took my sanity it took all the courage it took me just taking all the risks and jumping and starting in best lesson so far i am actually the cheapest cheapest maintenance girl in the whole of nairobi i'm easy i'm so easy all you need to impress me is two pizza of chicken in that is the most expensive meal you can buy me if you had, I love my Indichoma. If you can come with my Indichoma, you're my favorite person. So I feel like I'm very low maintenance. That does not mean I'm trashy or I lack class, but I know I'm, I'm easy to impress. If that's what high maintenance mean. You can see I don't do my nails. You can see I have shaved hair. Okay, that does not mean people who shave their hair is cheap, but I feel like I do the simplest of things just because I do makeup. Because um, a lot of men will assume at the hey, who them pack makeup, so you need them to remember. Ah, please. Me come to me with my indichoma. Come to me with two pizza. Cause it's spicy, hot, spicy. Ah, uh, I'm done. You take me to a kibanda. I'll go with you because I'm. I'm not thinking that if you send a pelo to a kibanda, I don't deserve to be in a kibanda. No, I'm thinking, what is this person adding to me? What kind of person are they? What if that's the only thing they have? But they are very good upstairs. Yeah, so very, very cheap maintenance, but I am very classy. At this point in time, I would say both, because unleashing others' potential also requires a bit of support. And 80% of the support comes in through financial or monetary value. So the only potential right now I have to unleash others' potential is uh, maybe my experience in my field, 
uh, maybe an opportunity at my workplace if it's there let's say when I'm having a wedding and there are like 10 people and I need uh, someone to help me of course now I can take someone to assist me and from there they'll be able to learn um, just talking to them maybe giving them uh, some uh, what would you call them mawaida kwa English yeah mawaida okay whatever that is but yeah just talking to them and getting to give them advice the word is advice yeah um so right now i'm in that place where i want to build my empire lika house um my business of course so this is where i eat this is where i pay my rent this is where i'm, I'm going to help my children accomplish their dreams so definitely I'm more inclined to building my empire, but if I come someone, if I come across someone who needs me to help them, and I'm in that position to help them, I will do it gladly because I wish someone would hold my hand and take me through this journey. And sometimes you don't get. So if I have the opportunity to hold someone's hand, I will do it gladly. Someone who won't give up on me. I'm very, I feel like I'm very easy, but I'm also very complicated as a person. So you need to not give up on me very fast. And that also reminds me of my, your, my value. Not my value, but your value to me. Because I will always remember he doesn't give up on me. So I'm not supposed to give up on them. So for me, he's someone who doesn't give up on me. And that is something I value. And that is just one thing that is what is that one important thing yeah so there are a few but if i was to choose one important thing it's someone who doesn't give up on me if i was to choose another thing someone who is mature and maturity comes in so many ways maturity you'll get to know when you're supposed to hold on and when you're supposed to let go of something when you're supposed to handle certain situations, how serious is it? Can it stay over the night? Can it be handled another time? Or it's there and then. So maturity and someone who doesn't give up on it. I have very few close friends. I'm feeling I'm feeling like that I have almost none. But I have those friends from childhood I consider very close. And the reason why I find making friends very difficult, either because I'm also difficult, um, so making friends for me, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. Especially women, it's difficult to make girl friends. I know one day I'll be able to do it, I'm in that process where I'm very, what do you call it? Goodness. Kizungu ni ngumu, pia kiswahili ni ngumu. Intentional. I'm very intentional in making friends because I know it's a weak point of mine. So I'm trying to be out there and trying to make friendships. But for me, friendships have to be lasting. They have to be mutual. They also have to be beneficial. Like, is this person going to help me grow? Is this person going to be like an advisor? Is this person going to be an encourager? Is this person always going to be there? Is this person going to be just mtu mwenye tunakutananga kukula? My friends have to be people who I consider them in my wedding um, wedding line, like the bridal team, someone who I can leave my child with when I'm going somewhere, Ama when something happens to me, I am dead, 100% sure they will take care of my child, someone I'll go to vacation with, someone who, even when they get a spouse, their spouse and them and my spouse, we are involved. So for me, it's very complex, like my friendships have to be, easy. it's so intertwined, so they have to be very intentional. I hope you really had fun in this session. Thank you so much for all the questions. I feel like they were totally creative, different from uh, where do you live? How old are you? Are you married? So thank you for this, guys. And if there is any, any, anything that I have left behind, kindly feel free to just comment below and ask me, I will answer as honest and as soon as possible until next time bye